Perfect. Uh, welcome, everybody. It's great to have you all here. Um, I'm sure I speak on behalf of Tyler as well when we say thank you for stepping in, taking some time out of your day, and learning a little bit about construction. So we've got, um, this is going to go into three different sections. We're going to talk about the construction um, industry as a whole. Then Tyler is going to speak upon um, programming at YOU, in which uh, is kind of addressing the need for construction laborers. And then I'm going to speak on behalf of Pathways uh, in the same regards as well. So we will go ahead and get started, but feel free to go ahead and ask any questions as we go. Um, okay, so Tyler, if you don't mind, I'll start and you can go. Perfect. Okay, so in construction, um, there were very few typical days. Basically, what you're looking at is um, different changing uh, work sites. So one day you could be at one site, the next day you could be at another. In one particular day, you could be at multiple sites. Um, the weather obviously impacts it quite a bit, um, and that will change whether or not you've got all the crews, all the different skilled laborers there, or whether or not there's only certain ones. Um, Typically, people in the construction industry do need to enjoy working outside. Um, you are outside for the majority of the work, or if at least not outside, you are still in the elements of the um, colder uh, in the winter, kind of hotter in the summer kind of uh, work weeks. Um, work weeks are typically 40 to 50 hours. Uh, again, that depends on the actual week and what's happening in that week. There could be times where things are a little bit slower. So for instance, um, if you're in working for a concrete company, you can't do concrete um, in rain. So you might find that this week your hours are drastically reduced, but then next week you have a heck of a lot more hours um, because the work still has to be done within deadlines. So it's really under, um, being able to understand that. And obviously the job can be dirty, cold, hot, wet, physically demanding. Um, so those are really the things that you yourself need to really understand about the construction industry. All right, Tyler. Uh, so we've got a few stats here on uh, the what's going on in the construction industry right now in terms of uh, need in that uh, industry. Uh, first, more than half of contractors anticipate greater difficulty in accessing skilled labor uh, compared to uh, 2020. A quarter of it expect to be less difficult. Um, in both 2020 and 2019, contractor surveys uh, showed that 69% of contractors anticipated greater difficulty in getting skilled labor compared to the previous year. And uh, the unionized ICI construction sector continues to be a leader in apprenticeship training and investment with 78% of union contractors employing apprentices in 2021, uh, compared to 54% of non-union contractors. I have a question about that last slide. Okay. Cool. Um, how do you explain the difference between the employers attitudes towards whether they're going to have difficulty or not difficulty like what is the disparity between that like why is that happening do you know sorry uh, oh sorry karina do you want to no you go ahead i'm just trying to play with my um screen for a second yeah i i think that number one um certainly over the past year employers have experienced a very competitive job market uh, meaning that it, it's hard to find people in just about any sector, uh, particularly skilled labor. Uh, so I think that they're just looking at reality in terms of what they've um, uh, what they've experienced over the past year. Uh, in addition, uh, as Karina mentioned earlier, um, transportation is a huge issue in this uh, area as well. So it's not only finding uh, people that are willing to to do it, it's pe finding people who are able to get to all the various job sites and things like that as well. Uh, so I think that, that part of it is just the fact that we have such a com competitive atmosphere for uh, for um, any any workers who are able to access that industry. Well, that's what I was I was uh, alluding to, like uh, that we've been hearing doom and gloom about, you know, not enough workers. And yet 25 percent of the employers don't expect any issues. And I was just wondering, like, what are they what factors are they looking at that they're still seeing a positive, you know, outlook? So for a lot of people, um the people are staying at the jobs longer than the typical leaving at 55 or 60. 
So you'll see a lot of people who aren't um, retiring as early as they used to. So therefore the opportunities aren't as many, um, but that's not impacting the employers in the same way because obviously they're keeping their employee base. All right, um, I skipped a screen and it won't let me go back. So I'm just gonna quickly go over the screen we missed. Um, it was a really short one. It just kind of talked about the short and long-term outlook for work in the sector and excellent in, is excellent due to the uh, factors such as aging workforce. So like I just said, um, the workforce is aging and they are staying longer. However, um, obviously eventually that has to change and, and more younger people are coming into it. Um, there's an apparent shortage of workers. Obviously, Tyler talked about this. Um, we haven't been promoting skilled trades uh, through high school like we used to. And so therefore people have kind of gotten away from it and have considered skilled trades to be a negative versus a positive and something that um, obviously industry requires to move forward. Um, steady and increasing amounts of forecasted work. So even if you look at London as a whole, our industry, um, our construction industry has just boomed over the last couple of years. And um, that doesn't seem to be changing. There's a lot of buildings going up. There's apartment buildings going up. Industrial um, buildings are, are growing huge in London. Um, and then also there's the aging infrastructure. So a lot of housings, um, may not be demolished, but you're looking at renovation, which is also still construction or um, doing a lot of extra uh, of rebuilding of, of certain um, uh, buildings and houses in order to uh, get them back up to uh, um, current standards. And now we're on the screen that we're supposed to be on. <laughs> is, is this my screen then? Yes. <laughs> Perfect. So uh, wages and benefits can vary from trade to trade and company to company. Uh, however, the unionized sector does tend to provide better wages and benefits uh, with uh, multi-signatory contractor partners. Uh, wage packages with Lyuna, um, our, our local uh, construction union here, uh, averages about 40 to 46 to 50 dollars an hour. Um, and that always depends on which trade and which sector you're working in. Um, it is comprised of 34 to 36 dollars an hour uh, plus health uh, and uh, pension benefits. In addition, uh, you can receive up to 10 percent vacation pay. Just to further upon that, um, my coworker Tulai Khan is on. She is our employment specialist for the construction industry. And one of the things we were talking about earlier today was actually the decrease in entry level um, over the last year. So I was wondering, Tulai, if you can just quickly mention something. Yeah, so I think uh, what Tyler, hi everyone, I think what Tyler was talking about were the the more unionized jobs with the, like with Vayuna and um, where they, really focus on apprenticeships and like specific trades. But as for like general labor going into construction, the wages have decreased a little bit. So whereas last year there was a shortage of um, people looking to get into the field, um, it was really a job seekers market, I would say. But currently there's a bit of an increase compared to last year. Um, so the wages have gone from $20 an hour to, uh, we're averaging around 17, 18. So it has gone down a little bit hourly, um, but it's, it's good news in the terms that, you know, em employers are able to maybe take a look at more applicants per job posting as they did previously. Thank you. Okay, apprenticeships. For those with limited experience looking to start in construction, uh, the apprenticeship model is the best option. Um, apprenticeship opportunities help bridge the gap between limited experience and a first job placement. Um, what I will like to say to this, and both um, Tyler and myself will talk about this a little bit more later on, um, apprenticeships are difficult to achieve uh, right off the bat, especially if you're coming right out of high school or, um, you know, and you're in your 20s and you're not really sure what is it is exactly that you're interested in. Um, there are options. And, and again, Tyler and I will go into those specifically. Um, but with Layuna specifically, now we chose like Layuna because they're local and they're a pretty big um, employer in the London um, and surrounding areas. Um, apprentices start at 50% 50, 50 of full rate and then earn a $1 an hour increase every 400 hours worked until full rate is achieved. Um, so usually about 4,000 hours worked. That also includes a lot of education as well. And each trade requires a different level of education. Um, so anywhere between three and seven years of 
um, employment and uh, education combined in order to get your full journeyman at the end of that. Uh, so what are employers looking for? Um, they are looking for people who are motivated and results driven. Uh, do not rely on instruction or uh, help from others to make them productive, meaning that they can work independently and without constant supervision. Uh, understand the value of a good way to earn for a hard day's work. Are reliable and not uh, looking to receive full-time wages for part-time work. Are able to work with people of diverse ages, nationalities, and skill sets. Are able to be mobile and report to work. Um, most or a lot of different construction sites will not be on a bus route, so it's important to be able to move to different sites throughout the day as the work requires. Uh, and takes ownership of their apprenticeship to become certified in their uh, respective trade, uh, meaning that they're going to make sure that they, they do the schoolwork that comes with an apprenticeship, they make sure they get their hours, they make sure everything is documented properly, uh, and that way they're, they're taking it seriously and making sure that they get the most out of the, the training and get the re rewarding career that they want. And we just added the actual um, website for Leona if anyone is looking at um, further information about that. But we'll open it up to uh, any questions that you might have right now quickly in regards to the actual construction industry. Yes, is there any, uh, any jobs that are available for unskilled people that are in their late 50s? Is there any hope of being hired at all? Absolutely. Um, Tulai can actually speak to that as well in regards to the employment opportunities. Yeah, so um, when it comes to the general labor, I would say not, but I mean, not not, but it's it's a bit less likely. However, if you're skilled, like a skilled carpenter, um, especially the, the hourly rates are pretty high. So the likelihood of you finding employment if you're uh, skilled at a certain trade is, is very, very, very high. Um, if that is the case, do reach out to me. I'm sure we I can have find a question. Yeah, absolutely. Go ahead. I have a question regarding uh, walking right into a supervisor's or logistics position with uh, that ex uh, expertise in past uh, um, employments. I'm so uh, sorry. So uh, you're looking like at I was a team leader. Manufacturing. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, so I was a team leader uh, with all kinds of uh, uh, administrative duties, and also I went back to school for two years and received a uh, diploma in uh, logistics and supply chain management, and I've applied for jobs in that in the construction field with not even a, an interview possible. So is that like just an internal thing, those jobs? Um, it's not an internal thing. Maybe they they feel that the uh, both the education and the experience is not overlapping with the type of work that you're applying to. So logistics and manufacturing is a quite different field in comparison to like if you're looking for a construction related job. However, well, a supervisor, a supervisor, supervisor, right? Uh, I mean, you're only supervising really the people. Yeah, but in, in the case of construction, you're not only supervising the people, you're also supervising the quality of work um, and all the things that go with it. So it's not just the people with construction. So they'll have like the supervisors on site are the lead hands. So they're uh, the journeyman or the the expert in whichever field it is. And they, they really oversee um, like the resources, the things that they'll need to complete the project place orders, um, see if the quality of work is good. So a lot of things are involved in that. Um, having a supervisory role in a different field doesn't really translate to you getting the same type of role in construction. Okay. Okay, um, so Tyler, if you wanna go ahead and say how YOU is um, addressing this need. Yeah, of course. Uh, one second here. Just have to find our presentation. Is that coming up for everyone or? Not yeah. yet. Oh, I can see it. Well, we can oh. see, but not the. Yeah. Oh. 
I'm the official the, present. Yeah. Clicking on the button, and it doesn't seem to want to go. Um, but that's okay. We can we can work off of this one too. So sorry about that. Um, so uh, just a little bit about Youth Opportunities Unlimited to start. Uh, annually, we support over 3,600 youth between the ages of 15 and 29 in Middlesex. Uh, and our mission is to support youth in building their skills, confidence, and independence to reach their goals. Uh, we do that in a variety of different ways. Uh, we, we, have, we provide housing assistance. Uh, we, we have a youth shelter on Clark Road. Uh, we provide assistance with getting your GED or reconnecting with school. Uh, but I'm here today to talk a little bit about how we help with finding work uh, because I'm the Employment Services Manager. Uh, so uh, to, to help uh, youth get kind of more connected with construction uh, construction industry, uh, we actually built a partnership with a local construction uh, where we're helping to connect through a pre-construction program uh, where youth will be going on site uh, to help out uh, with uh, with um, Oh gosh, uh, with uh, employees at that company uh, doing some construction tasks on site. So uh, we're looking at uh, introducing uh, by, by supporting first with getting started. And that means that we'll help with getting all of the clothing required. So uh, safety equipment, uh, season appropriate clothing. Thankfully, we're through winter now. So we're getting started when the weather's getting a little nicer. But when winter starts, we'll get warm gear and all those things that you need. Safety boots, safety glasses, everything like that. Uh, we pay, um, and with partnership with Pathways as well, for working at Heights training, uh, but also we'll make sure that you get your WMIS, your AODA, uh, your four steps going, and we also provide transportation to the sites. So we have a truck where, where we uh, take the team out to all the various sites around the city, uh, making sure that, uh, that everyone gets to where they need to be. And of course, uh, you just have to get to our recycling facility to get that ride. Um, and the, the great thing about this is that the hours for our training that we're going to be offering is very consistent. It's going to be Monday to Friday, 7.30 to 4, um, and it's going to be paid training for, for 12 weeks. Uh, and during this paid training, you'll have exposure to multiple skilled trades on site, uh, working with journeymen, tradespeople, skilled apprentices, and uh, exposure to all kinds of different tasks on site to kind of uh, get a good idea of what it's like to work in construction and decide whether or not it's something you want to pursue. So a day in the life of someone in our pre-construction program, uh, you might be uh, getting some training on the following tasks, uh, operating and caring for construction equipment, tools and machines, uh, assisting equipment operators, carpenters and other skilled labor on site, uh, prepping construction sites by clearing obstacles and hazards, uh, loading and unloading construction materials, uh, putting together and taking apart temporary structures such as scaffolding, tarps, plywall, et cetera, uh, removing and filling and compacting earth uh, and performing site cleanup at the end of the day, including things like sleeping or sweeping, not sleeping, definitely not that, uh, sweeping, mopping, uh, and uh, any other uh, type of duties that are, that are needed to make the site safe and clean at the end of the day. Uh, so the best thing is, is that you're going to be training on site with partners. So part of that is that these partners are very interested in hiring people. Um, as, uh, as we discussed with Karina earlier, there's a huge demand and they want to make sure that the people coming through the site are having a plan to, to kind of transition into the industry if there's a spot for them and if they feel like that's something they want to do. So we're going to be working with, uh, with the team uh, that, that come through the training to develop, to develop a solid plan on terms, in terms of what your next steps are. Um, and those construction uh, partners are going to be looking for things like back filling apprenticeship opportunities, uh, recognizing and rewarding good work ethic uh, with uh, potential full-time job opportunities. And obviously, they really want to train uh, their employees through their, this partnership. So um, it's, a, it's a big opportunity for someone who's interested in construction, maybe needs some support with getting on site or a little bit around the know-how and, uh, you know, a really positive um, supportive work environment where, you know, the idea is that we're working safe, but we're learning at the same time. So you don't have to get it perfect 100% at first, where we're going to get to that point together. Uh, so if you are interested um, in, in accessing this opportunity, absolutely feel free to reach out to us. Um, our phone number is there, and I'll make sure that I send this presentation to Trevor um, after this. So, uh, so all the attendees can be sent the presentation as well. And if you have any questions, please let me know. There's a couple of questions in the chat. Um, one is, so there is no entry level construction jobs or training for someone who is 57 years old. Uh, there absolutely is. And I know Karina will be able to uh, discuss that uh, coming up in a moment. Perfect. Um, so that's coming. So the second question from somebody else is, is there an age limit to this 12 week training program? 
yes, the age limit is 30 years old. But so like I, I said, uh, if you're you're over that age, Karina absolutely uh, will have uh, will have training that'll be perfect for you. Perfect. Thank you, Tyler. I don't see any other questions in the chat. Oh, there's another one. Um, I'm 42 years old, have worked in construction for four years, mainly fire cold fire code drywall in certain framing, ceiling channels, and insulation. I'm not sure what the question is. That's all that's typed. I'm wondering if your next part of the presentation will address this because it's somebody over the age of 30. You're muted, Karina. <laughs> it's okay. Just trying to get my screen showed up. So um, is that working? Kind of. I don't understand why this isn't working. Yeah, we've only got like a, a third of the screen showing there. Oh. oh, there it is. So now I just need to do the slideshow part. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, we'll do it the old fashioned way. Technology's fun. It really is. There okay. we go. You see this? Okay, perfect. So, um, Tyler was talking about the services that are available at YOU, and like he stated, um, obviously YOU is dedicated to youth, so under the age of 30. Um, Pathways uh, Employment Health Center is not, um, we're not uh, age defined. <laughs> so we have programming for all ages um, and availabilities. So I'm just gonna quickly go through um, kind of how we are tackling the construction industry in London and the surrounding areas. Um, so a little bit about us, uh, Pathways um, Skill Development anyway, so our actual skills training courses were established in 2008 and more than 718 Londoners have graduated from Pathways Construction Training Program here at, at obviously at Pathways. 85% um, of graduates are employed full-time within three months of graduation and over the last two years this has actually increased to 95 plus. Um, so typically when it comes to that, um, if you are interested in working and you have the physical, ab um, physical ability, the time availability, um, and not a whole lot of restrictions, um, preferably even a vehicle on top of that, or it can get to a common access point, um, there's a very good chance that Tulai can get you <laughs> employment and get you out working. Um, some of the employers that we currently work with are Workforce Labor Inc., Gold Eye Construction, Covenant Construction, New York Property Management, BRL Construction, Forever Homes, Courtney Roofing, Studeris, Electric, and Kitchen of Canada, and, and a lot more. Um, most importantly for us anyways at Pathways is that we are a registered private career college, so all of our training courses are um, you do get a college um, certificate at the end for, of completion, and then all the certificates that you receive are also transferable, which makes a big deal when selling yourself to employers. So we have a couple of different streams that you can do the construction program through. So we have a regular stream. Um, so that's going to be for somebody who uh, isn't really sure kind of what construction looks like, where they're interested in going. Um, just really want to get uh, that, that general labor um, role. So that entry level first uh, first job kind of construction. Um, you That is again open to absolutely anybody, but we will do all aspects of um, home building is basically what we're going to teach you. So it's eight weeks in class and then there's a one week co-op at the end. And then from there, you will work specifically with Tulai um, to help you to find employment in the field that works for you. We also have a pre-apprenticeship stream as well. So this is for somebody who really has a bigger focus towards the skills trade. And the differences between the two is that the pre-apprenticeship program also includes an eight-week paid placement at the end of this. So this is for somebody who wants to work for a company where possibly the option for an apprenticeship is available there. Um, depending on kind of your interests is really where we look at uh, in regards to funding and opportunities um, and which kind of stream you're gonna go into because somebody who really has no idea what they want, just wants a general outlook, or maybe they wanna get into 
um, opening their own home renovation program or uh, company um, down the lines, then the pre-apprenticeship program isn't exactly what uh, they would be looking for. They'd be looking for the regular stream. Um, from that, uh, one of the other products or the other programs we have is our Building New Futures Together program. So we are currently in a partnership with Chippewas of the Thames First Nation, where we are actually building um, micro homes. So they're 400 square foot homes, but we've incorporated that into a 12 week um, skills training course as well. So you're getting the same thing that you would get in the regular construction class, but this one is very much um, actually on the job site. You're learning everything on the job site and it's 12 weeks and uh, we are looking at doing this one again in the fall. So um, opportunities for this will be available later as we kind of get closer to it. Um, but that's one of the other streams that you can do. Um, one of the other courses that we offer is our foundations in wood manufacturing. Um, so this is for cabinetry and woodworking. So the interesting thing about construction is that there are so many different fields that you can go into. And one of them is definitely cabinetry and woodworking in the London area. Um, so we are offering this course as well. Um, so this one is 10 weeks. So again, this is a pre-apprenticeship kind of role as well. So it's 10 weeks in class and then an eight week paid placement at the end. And this is for um, mainly people are moving into cabinet making companies. However, a lot of those cabinet making companies also do the home renovations, the home building, the demolition, new home building, which is why there's that overlap between construction and foundations in wood manufacturing. Um, when it comes to certifications, they pretty much all come with the same certifications, the same um, same clothing, but the tools are different from the construction one to the wood manufacturing because, again, of what you would be doing in the, um, the wood manufacturing is slightly different than the construction. And uh, from there, in the cabinetry and woodworking, you could also um, become a member of our London Community Wood Shop. Um, so again, we do offer, if you do take this course, you get a three-month um, membership to the London Community Wood Shop which just allows you to also grow your experiences uh, in woodworking and actually creating custom products to, um, to really hone in on your skills to make yourself a lot more, again, um, appealing to employers. <laughs> and then that is Pathways. So in general, um, we have lots of different opportunities, lots of different grants. And depending on your needs, your skill levels is kind of how we determine which route is going to be the best for you. Um, and that's done through multiple intakes um, with yourself. You're a part of that. Um, and we would have that face to face to kind of decide what your best options are. So I have a question. Sorry. Yeah. I have my HVAC G3 uh, gas license. Do you guys help uh, people find jobs in that field? July? Yeah, I, I do actually. So I have clients with um, with those uh, cert certs as well, and I actually have multiple HVAC companies that I I kind of help with their employment side. So yeah, um, that's also considered under the same umbrella for us. Okay, nice. There's yeah. also there's also other questions here. I think uh, there's one here that does the level of English have a limit to obtain apprenticeship? Um, so, <laughs> uh, to take our training courses, you do have to have ESL level, uh, benchmark five, um, for employment. Uh, I mean, that really comes down to the employer themselves. Uh, there are some employers who, um, I, I mean, depending on their own languages, right, <laughs> is how they would hire. However, to become a skills trade person and actually get that piece of paper, you will need to go to Fanshawe. You will need to complete um, education at Fanshawe. And if you intend to eventually get your journeyman, it's a pretty extensive Ontario um, exam. I believe it's like four or five hour exam. So, um, and they're not necessarily um, going to allow discrepancies in, in language. Like they're not gonna give that as, a, um, as an out, unfortunately, or anything like that. Thank you. Uh, let me see. 
There's another one. Um, is there a property management apprenticeship available? So, um, no, like, we I don't, we, we no longer, like, not no longer. Currently, we're not running the property. Did you want to talk about the course, Karina? And then I can talk about something else about property management, maintenance. Yeah, so property management, property maintenance, two different things. Um, so property maintenance, if you're looking for the cleaning, the janitorial, um, then that doesn't necessarily have an apprenticeship. However, you could do, and I'm sure Tulai will talk about this, um, you could move more towards um, the maintenance side of it, which does have different apprenticeships. So, Tulai? Yeah, so for the maintenance part of it, we've actually had um, previous clients that went through our, our basic, like our, our main construction uh, program with us, and they were placed in maintenance roles. So, um, yeah, it is a combi at times though, Karina, like it is a combination of um, some, a little bit of cleaning, but also, you know, doing the odd uh, drywall repair, basic plumbing, basic electrical, like things that you, you need to kind of do the job without having the actual, um, like, um, red seal trade or whichever it is. So for that stuff, uh, we employers have like uh, York property maintenance, they have uh, management, sorry, they have hired maintenance workers that graduated from our construction course. It also depends on, um, you know, the the type of work that you're, you've done maybe in the past and kind of what we can give you in the course. So Throughout the course, we always sit down with you and we kind of look at what's realistic for you versus your goal and kind of what we can guide you to help you become, um, move towards the path that you want to be in. Um, but yeah, if you're thinking of maintenance type of roles, then absolutely, um, we are able to place you in, in a maintenance role without having an apprenticeship, if that helps. Does that answer the question? I'm not sure. I don't see anything else. Um, there's uh, quite a few more questions in the chat. Do you want me just to keep going through them? Yeah, go ahead. Um, so the next one is, are there any pre-apprenticeship construction programs outside of Pathways for 30 years and up? Yeah. Oh, um, I don't know why you have a pre-apprenticeship program. I'm not sure if it's bound to an age, though. Tyler, are you aware of? Uh, I am not aware, unfortunately. That's a... Uh... Yeah, Layuna does have one for sure. Yeah. I have a few of my clients that are actually in that pre-apprenticeship program that I'm going to work with employment afterwards, but um, I can look it up or you ask the other questions maybe. Okay. Um, there's another one. We've kind of gone into apprenticeships now instead of just construction. Are there any electrician apprenticeships? Um, absolutely. <laughs> Uh, like any apprenticeship though, like when you start specializing in it, um, they really do want you to have the basic understanding of all aspects of construction. Um, so that's a really big part, but uh, yes, and I, I feel like I'm just going to keep going to Tulai and Tyler, you can absolutely jump in as well, but um, no when it comes yeah, so to apprenticeships. Usually how it works is like if you're looking for um, ele an electrical apprenticeship and let's say that you have no um, formal electrical education. So you have to have a certain amount of hours um, and also be signed on as an apprentice and have some type of schooling. But if you're if you're just new to it, you have some construction experience or you're coming out of one of our programs, uh, the construction programs. Um, we can place you with an employer like Studer's Electric or like the other employers that we have in the field. Uh, they will take you on as an electrical laborer. Um, they will try you out for a probation period to see if they want to kind of move forward. And if they do, then what they do is they sign you as an, on as an apprentice through the system. Uh, once they sign you on, they'll go through the requirements and the type of schooling that you'll need and the amount of hours that you want to uh, that you need to put in and all that stuff happens after. So I don't want anybody to be deterred from an apprenticeship like electrical. It's not that difficult. If you want to do it, there is absolutely a way, even if you don't have the experience, if you have some uh, construction abilities, you can absolutely be placed with an employer, um, an electrical employer, they'll take you on as a apprentice, uh, sorry, 
as an electrical laborer. So it's basically like a construction laborer. You'll be, you know, carrying wiring and doing the odd rough and stuff with them. And you'll kind of learn um, if they see that you're really into it and, you know, you're taking initiative and you're working hard, then they'll invest in you and they'll sign you on as apprentice. There's also a question. You might not have this, but uh, do you do you have any HVAC programs or are aware of any place that provides it if you don't provide it there? So we, in our pre-apprenticeship construction um, stream, actually, and in the normal construction, we will be touching in on HVAC, but for a full HVAC course, um, you're looking at either North American Trade School or uh, Fanshawe. Um, next question. Where can where can you present the summary to obtain a job opportunity? Not sure what's meant by that. I don't know if the person wants to ask the question verbally. We'll see if they come on. While they come on, I can just answer the pre-apprenticeship um question that I wasn't able to answer previously. So I just looked it up on Layuna's pre-apprenticeship program that they have. The only requirement for age is that they're 18 years or older. It's not capped at an age, um, like a different age. It's just if you have to be, um, be 18 years or older and then you can apply to the apprenticeship pre-apprenticeship program through Layuna. Okay. I can provide the link for that in the chat right now. Perfect. And then we have another one. Um, anything for heavy machine operators in construction? I have certificates for five heavy machines, um, but uh, I'd be willing to start at the bottom and work into it. Are the certificates um, current? Are they? I don't. Doesn't know. say. Doesn't say. Uh, yes, my I just got them like three months ago. Okay. Oh. So, so you're looking for employment, basically. Yeah. You have to yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you're a hard person to find. I can tell you that you should, uh, yeah, there should be employment options for you. Absolutely. The thing uh, is nobody wants you to let you ride their half a million dollar machine when you're a newbie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you need to find the oh. right connector, the right employer. <laughs> you have yeah. to find the right employer. And then maybe um, like just any field that anybody listening this to this can get into is just so let's say you want to work um find a company that has for you in your case steve uh, a company that um where they have heavy machinery operators and they might have different postings like a laborer so it's like getting into a company and allowing them to see that you're um, able to do good. The same thing goes with forklift operators. So you get into a warehouse, you're not gonna get on the forklift right away. They're gonna see you in the warehouse. Um, you know, the forklift operator is gonna call in sick one day, you're gonna hop on, you're gonna cover things. And with time, they're gonna see that, you know, you're able to do it. That's kind of how um, I think the best bet in your case, um, if you're finding it hard, I would look for a company that has multiple postings where you could maybe go in as a laborer, um, I don't know, do they have co-pilots? I'm not really sure, uh, but just something where it's available and you'll be able to hop on should there be someone not come in or they just need an extra person to hop on and just you being available with the certs, that's how you're going to get there. Same goes for forklift um, and all these other things that currently are not coming to mind. There's another question. Um, it says, I've asked questions about construction. I'm not a framer, but did certain aspects of framing. Not a drywaller, but did tons of certain drywall installation. Not a taper, but did lots of taping. That was my job, certain and specific tasks out of all three trades. Where do I stand with experience when it comes to employers? Um, do you want me to answer this? I, I, I don't want to step, Tyler, you can, if you feel like you want to, I'm no, good answering them. I, but I just, I, I'm happy to answer questions, but I'm kind of treating this as your Q&A session too. Okay, so, so I don't want to dominate if it's not meant for me. Okay, so, um, I mean, you're in good standing if you have all these three. Uh, you could seek out renovation companies because you do require all of these things. Um, generally, home builders, they'll, um, in, they'll contract out 
these trades. So they'll have a contractor that uh, comes in just for specifically for the drywall. And believe it or not, they'll have someone come in just for the mudding and taping part. Um, so it was mudding, framing. No, it was drywall. Um, drywall, taping, and framing. Yeah. I mean, all of these are really um, great experiences. I think you fare well. There's definitely need out there. Um, so yeah, if you're if you're interested in employment it, it, with that experience, you could go the renovation route, or you could stick specifically to that one one section of. So it could be drywall, or it could be taping, mudding, or it could be uh, framing. Yeah, I especially if you have fire, like the the fire um, fireproofing. Uh, framing fire fireproofing that you've done and with those installations um, there's a lot more townhouses that are being built right now than single um, single residential so there's the need definitely for the fireproofing part when you're framing so that experience is really important I was actually just talking to the owner of Goldeye who's Dave Rempel and they're going more into with the prices of homes being so much higher lots more townhomes are going to be built. So they'll need that, anyone who's experienced in that field for sure. Perfect. Um, next question is where can I apply for construction job opportunities? Pretty much anywhere. Um, you can go to any agency, whether that be Pathways, YOU, Goodwill, uh, Leeds, Hutton House. <laughs> Um, most of us also have a job board on our website. You can just check out the job board. Um, connecting, if, if you're not familiar with how to go about doing it, honestly, getting connected with an actual agency is your number one bet because you can actually work with a specialist in that field who can find and help you to navigate um, the industry, navigate the companies, navigate what barriers you may or may not have. Um, I mean, that, that can be absolutely anything. So the more help you can get in your job search, the, the, the better. And you have opportunities that you might not have without having that support of another agency. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah uh, like if you're not, sorry, go ahead, Tyler. Uh, the other thing too is um, if a lot of the construction companies have head offices around, um, don't be shy about stopping in saying hello and asking if you can talk to someone about your experience because uh, today I've heard a lot of people talking about great experience they have in the past and that doesn't always come out on your resume, right? Uh, particularly on Indeed. You might be applying to something that has 500 resumes on there, right? And, you know, you don't have every minute of the day to, to go through and catch all those cool things that you've done. So just go in and talk to them and say, hey, you know, I've got my experience in drywalling, taping, all these sorts of things. Uh, what's what's your advice for me on how I can find a spot? And usually if you ask someone for help, they're going to give you some kind of help. And sometimes it ends up with a job, right? So um, definitely don't forget about the face-to-face, the -face, person person-to-person part. And obviously that's nerve-wracking and anxiety-provoking, but that's what we're here for. So whether it's Pathways or YOU or any of the other service providers in London, come to us and we can help you out with that networking piece too. That was where I was going with yeah. what I wanted to say. <laughs> Networking is key. Um, if you're comfortable doing it yourself, you can actually just show up with your, I, like it's very common that you show up with your steel toe boots, work pants and a hard hat and you, you know, you go to an area, you see a drywalling truck outside, you just walk up to them and talk to them and they're like, okay, let's try you out. Let's Let's get you going for a day. So um, it's very old school and how things are done, which is great because I love that. It's very just like interactive in person. If you're comfortable with that, I would give that a shot. If not, um, we have like my our job, both at YOU, uh, Employment Specialist or Job Developers, and myself here at Pathways is our job is really to make those connections. So I spend a lot of time on the field with my work boots and just talking to, to everybody to make those connections for you. So then when you come, we have opportunities for you here. And thank you. And there's a question, if a person has a uh, job experience, it might be something else like uh, waste management or hazardous materials, something like that, but it's from outside of Canada. So if someone has foreign job experience, how can they apply that here in Canada? I remember the certificates. <laughs> 
making sure you have the, the understanding of Ontario rules um, is also a really big thing. Ontario, even compared to the other provinces, is much stricter. Um, so being aware of the building codes, build, uh, being aware of what certificates are needed to work on a construction site. I don't know how many times, I'm sure Tyler hears this as well at YOU. I don't know how many times we hear about uh, employers um, who have hired people from out of, uh, out of Canada and just put them on a job site and that person gets injured um, and they have zero health and safety training. They, most importantly, they don't have the working at height certificate, which is a necessity in Ontario. Um, so it's really being aware of what your requirements what your requirements are in Ontario and getting those before you get out there. Um, personally, uh, in our construction course itself, it's a great way to get that experience really quickly, um, especially if you've worked uh, mostly with concrete and um, versus wood um, wood building. So that's a really big difference. Um, but you also get all of your certificates right up front. And that's really, really important um, in Ontario. Any other questions? It looks like that might be... That's it for the chat. Yeah. If there's any questions anyone wants to ask, this is probably the opportunity now. So basically, if I wanna get started up with you guys, I can just walk in. The pathways so your best bet is to contact your caseworker and request a referral to whatever agency you want to work with but yes for us um obviously ask for pathways or ask for you if, if that's what you choose um you can also stop by and just ask questions to determine first if we are the company you want to work with um you can do that but yeah it's it's the first and foremost uh, really the important part is to make sure that your caseworker is aware that this is what you want to do and this is who you want to work with. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, I think um, just kind of like a, as a um, an end note to this, um, pre-apprenticeships, uh, there are so many available routes to get to an apprenticeship, um, but it's a long route. Uh, it's a hard work route. It's not one that's going to come easy to anyone. No one's going to come knocking at your door and say, here, do you want this? Um, you really do have to prove yourself. You really do need to work at it every single day. Um, but it's worth it in the end, if this is the industry you want to be in. Um, and the other side of the apprenticeship side of it is it's hard to find that person and that company that will take you on. And that's why service providers are so important. Um, because we can be that person in between you and the employer. We can be your, your reference, basically, right? That person, that company who is saying, give this person a shot. This is what they've proven to us. This is their abilities. They've shown up to workshops. They show up to training courses every day. Um, this is how, this is what they want. And uh, service providers can get you there. Okay, well, on that note, um, I'd like to thank uh, Corinna, um, Tyler, and Tulai for providing the information on what it takes to work in the construction uh, industry and how important it is to be properly certified because it is a dangerous occupation as well. Um, but there are rewards in working in this field. And it is a, a growing and demanding field, needing lots of workers. So thank you very much for providing that information. Trevor? My pleasure. Thank you. So I just want to add really quickly, uh, folks, we're going to try and experiment and send you all an email follow-up after this uh, session, uh, just to give us some feedback about how this goes. I think because we did the recording, we should have your email address recorded. Uh, as part of that. So hopefully, if you see an email from me, you'll know that it's just a feedback questionnaire um, and just looking to get some feedback from you. Okay, thanks very much. Thank you, everyone. We appreciate the time. Thank you. Thank you.